Welcome to the December 11th, 2017 meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission meeting. Merry Christmas to you, by the way. Um, if you would stand with us, please, Commissioner Pettis Reed will lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Pettis. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this evening and this opportunity together to look at the planning and the growth of this county. Father, we're so thankful for this county that we live in and for all the blessings that we have in this county, but may we always remember that the blessings that we have here come from you. Father, we ask that you watch over us, that you guide us, and we can ask that you be with those who are misfortunate and that we look for their needs too within this county. Be with us all, watch over and protect us. We offer this prayer in your son's holy name. Amen. Will you join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Rhonda Allen. Here. Jim Averwater. Here. Lee Bogle. David Jones, Mike Cush, Craig Lynch, Here. Chip Pinion, Charlotte P, Here. Pettis Reed, Here. Mike Bott, Here. Jeff Phillips. Present. I have a quorum. Thank you, Gail. We've had three items that have been withdrawn from tonight's agenda. 6A1, a final plat. 17-2081 Gerwick Subdivision, 6A3, 17-2094 Javier Olvera Line Shift, 6A6, 17-2098 FJB Limited Partnership. Those items have been withdrawn and will not be heard tonight. Uh, getting right into our agenda, item 6A submitted for final plat approval, 6A2, 17-2093, Wayne Westmoreland subdivision, one lot on one half acres on RM located off Stones River Lane, Wayne Westmoreland is the applicant. This includes a waiver for off-site soils. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you and good evening members of the commission. Uh, the applicant is proposing to split about a half an acre off from the parent tract, uh, leaving approximately 124 acres on the parent tract. Uh, septic soils are shown on the subject property. Uh, there's also uh, additional soil which is being shown off-site, which is really why this plat is being brought to you tonight. Uh, they are requesting an off-site soils waiver, as you can see on your both your iPads and on the screen uh, before you. Uh, there wasn't just a whole lot of comments on this plat, just a couple of minor things. Uh, this plat really is in good order. Uh, we have uh, been in touch with the, uh, uh, the design engineer regarding, regarding this application as far as the, uh, the way that they address the comments. There's just a couple of minor tweaks that they have to make, uh, but nothing that should hold this up for any kind of approval. So with that, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions, and uh, we just recommend any approval subject to staff comments. have a motion and a second to approve item 17-2093, Wayne Westmoreland Subdivision. Any other questions? I have a question. Since there's a soil site on the lot, is it not sufficient? There's just not enough of it there. Uh, they, they have to have enough for a primary and a backup. So considering the amount of soil it looks like off-site, it looks like they are, are counting on that probably for a little bit of both. It's, it's marginal soil, so they'll need a little bit more to get the number of bedrooms that they they want. So they'll have to get a little bit extra land off-site. Other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. Any opposition? <coughs> motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6A. 4-17-2095, resubdivision of lot two on the Peter Baltimore subdivision, two lots on 4.67 acres zone RM located off Deer Run Road. Kenneth and Lisa Baltimore are the applicants. 
includes a waiver for our fire hydrant requirements, Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, as you stated, this property is located along Deer Run Road. Uh, the applicant is proposing to subdivide the subject property into two separate buildable lots. Uh, we did have uh, a number of comments on this. Uh, most of them were more what I would call housekeeping in nature. After reviewing the changes that were made, this plat is in good order and we'd recommend approval. They'll both have frontage on Deer Run Road. Both lots, lots one and two, will have frontage on Deer Run Road, not, not on Baltimore Lane. All right, and the reason this one's coming before you is due to the fire hydrant waiver issue. Um, the, there's a letter from Consolidated Utility in your agenda packets on your iPads that state that the line in this area cannot support a hydrant. So typically a one or two lot subdivision, we can handle administratively, but in this case, we couldn't. So out why they did the strip of land like that why they chose well you know as it turns out it was approved that way originally uh just within the last few years and after realizing that we had, had to let them do that in the first place i didn't pursue it any further so make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments I have a motion and a second to approve any other questions i'm sorry doug repeat the reason Well, it was approved like that originally. I think at one time that was, uh, it's actually, there's part of an easement that uh, that uh, accesses that tract in the back. Uh, this was approved in this condition probably within the last few years. And at that point, like I said, I just didn't see any point of pursuing it any further. I just let it alone since we'd already considered it and approved it that way. It's mainly taken up with utility lines. Um, overhead power lines and, a, and an access easement and we didn't see any need for moving it. Other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve 17-2095 resubdivision of lot two on Peter Baltimore uh, subdivision. All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6A5, 17-2097, Bobby G. Smith, subdivision, one lot on 1.82 acres, zoned RM, located off Lee Road, J.B. Burns, LLC, and Scott Butler are the applicants. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. A portion of this property, really the balance of the property, has been annexed into the town of Smyrna, which is the property really to the north of the uh, uh, of the plat. You don't see all of it on there, but it's been annexed by the town of Smyrna. Uh, the applicant plans to subdivide this portion that's still in the county to build a home on. Uh, there's no waivers required of this plat. It's really just coming before you tonight due to the right-of-way dedication. Uh, we did have a, a number of comments on this. Uh, it's difficult to see on the plat, but there's actually a, there was a little small strip in this area kind of I mean uh, similar to what we were talking about in the last one uh, at one point it was a separate parcel uh, but as part of this plat they're combining those two and then the remaining portion in the back will be combined with the property that's in the town of Smyrna of course that doesn't necessarily concern us but uh, just to let you know what's what's going on with that uh, I believe that property to the west there or to the north of the subject property we're talking about is slated for uh, the continuation of that subdivision as I understand it so uh, with that the comments that we had have been addressed and we feel the plat's in good order and we'd recommend approval A motion and a second to approve. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion to approve item 17-2097, please say aye. Is there any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6B submitted for site plan approval. 6B1, 17-3036, Golden Glass, new construction of 1,500 square feet of building area with parking on 1.92 acres, zone CS, located along Franklin Road. Ray Roth is the applicant. Doug. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, this site plan will look familiar. Uh, we've looked at this uh, the last month or so uh, for Golden Glass out there on Franklin Road. After the last Planning Commission meeting when this item was deferred due to the, um, the issues that were still unresolved, uh, myself, uh, engineering staff, and the applicant, as well as the applicant's design engineer, all sat down and discussed some possible changes to the site plan, which might uh, help with uh, some of the issues we had. Uh, a lot of those issues have been addressed. Uh, now, there are still some that, that, that would still need to be addressed. Uh, one of the issues that we talked about was lining up that driveway, as you can see, with the rest of the parking area. Now, this is an older plan, but they have changed that. Uh, the detention pond, which was on one side, I guess that had been the east side of the lot, has been changed to the east and the west side of the lot to, to help balance that out and also to uh, remove the encumbrances that were coming upon the, uh, the septic system. That parking area there that uh, Mike is highlighting, you can see that there is a water line that cuts right through that. Uh, that parking has also been shifted out of the way. Now, CUD still has some issues with that, but they have provided staff, which the staff has uh, sent over to the uh, design engineer as far as the, um, some steps that they would like to take to make sure that the line uh, is protected. It's a shallow line and it's, it's a, uh, a type of asbestos, asbestos t line, so more fragile, so they just need to be careful as they're working around it. Uh, I'll let Mike describe some of the other uh, issues that uh, are on the engineering side. Uh, one of the big things that we do see is just to make sure that all the um, parking and access ways meet county specification. That was the one thing that we saw from a planning standpoint. Uh, some tweaks to the landscape ordinance. It's a, it really is in a lot better shape than it was, but Mike, I'll let you handle that part. Well, a couple of the issues we had last time were um, a state requirement that any cut greater than 18 inches would needs to be 25 feet or more away from a, a septic system. So they have got an existing system that was right next door to the uh, uh, existing septic system. So what we asked them to do is when they move the driveway to line up the driveway, put some of the pond on the west side and some on the east side to kind of move it away from there. And we and they did that. And then also we asked them to reconfigure the parking um, away from the water line so they wouldn't have to worry about it. Eventually, this water line will be taken out of service. I think it's uh, CD's working, and forgive me, Alan, if I misspeak. Uh, they're working on phase one of replacing water line along 96, and this section will be called phase three, and it'll eventually be taken out of service. So a few years down the line, they won't have to worry about it. But right now, this is uh, a shallow, fragile line that they don't want to mess with, so we're, we ask them to move away from that. But in realigning this, reworking it, um, they got some of the parking a little too steep, especially the, the handicap parking, so they'll have to adjust that, do some tweaking on that, and some other massaging. But um, we feel comfortable to say that, yes, it's in, in good order, and we've got uh, some revisions here that will address all those. Questions? Chair, I'll make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments. We have a motion. And the second. Thank you. Other questions or concerns? Doug, on the plat, I'm looking at the the site plan, not the one that's part of the agenda. And it says that the nearest fire hydrant is 1776 feet away. Is yes, that correct? Yes. So they're, but they're not asking for a waiver. No, for site plans, that's not required anymore. We took that provision out of the ordinance since we have fire codes now, so they'll just have to deal with Larry Farley, our fire chief, on that. Other questions? Ready to vote? Submitted for site plan approval, item 17, 
2023-3036 Golden Glass. All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Is there any opposition? The motion to approve carries. Thank you. 6B2-17-3041 James Davis property, new construction of 12,000 office warehouse space with parking on 2.84 acres zoned EAC located along Miller Road. James Davis is the applicant. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, the applicant's proposing to construct an office and warehouse type development to sell and store cables and wiring. They are also planning three retail business suites towards the front of the property. Uh, as you can see on the site plan, the front of the building. Uh, there were a number of comments that we did identify on this particular application. Uh, after looking at the revisions, there's still a few things that they have to tweak. Uh, there's a couple of label, I'm sorry, a couple of details that they have to uh, add to the uh, detail sheet, just things like construction entrance, concrete washout, things like that. Uh, these items have been, ref uh, we've referred these also as well to the uh, design engineer. Uh, things like uh, they have to, they mislabeled the front property call just to something minor they can fix. Uh, I'm going to turn over to Mike here just a minute for some of the engineering issues that he can get into uh, in more detail. Uh, in the parking area, they have too many spaces on that uh, that parking closest to the building. Uh, the the uh, the requirement, the, the maximum required uh, spaces in a row without any kind of an island break would be 15, and that's just a little bit over. So it's just a matter of adding another island, but that should be relatively easy to uh, to take care of. Uh, that and then making the associated changes with the uh, landscape plan. Uh, but besides that, uh, I'll turn it over to Mike to let him talk about the uh, engineering issues. Dave. Uh one thing that they've they've done in the in the process they did have doors on this south side of the building they've added door in the back and extended the parking along this this edge this south side of the building so they wanted to put gravel at first but now they're going to put asphalt uh, back here and one of my comments was okay you don't need all this vast expanse of, of asphalt right now you need more room for your uh, detention pond so I've asked them to shift the driveway up a little bit and to uh, eliminate a lot of this uh, parking I'm um, excuse me pavement here so uh, this will be moved up and uh, this area in the back will be paved and will have curb they will have a, a septic system on-site septic system that they should have plenty of soil for um, the retail shops up front and the warehouse, but that's something they'll have to work out with the state. Is if uh, the the state will tell them how much uh, soil they have, how much water capacity, so that will limit what can go in these uh, retail shops up front. I don't, you know, I don't think they can have a big restaurant or anything like that, but um, it should be uh, sufficient to, uh, for retail. But other other than a few tweaking of the pond and. Uh, coordinating, you know, handicap ramps and things like that. It, the site's in pretty good order. Um, and just as a reminder, um, they can't pull a building permit. They can't move dirt until they've addressed all of our staff comments. So any outstanding issues, um, I won't give them a grading permit and Doug won't stamp the plans so they can pull the building permit. So there's, there's some safety nets involved and with, until everything's addressed like this plan or other site plan we they don't move ahead but with what they've got it's it, it's doable and in pretty good working order Honda. okay so if those three spaces are retail and then the back is warehouse have they talked about where deliveries are going to happen or if there's a loading area? That, that's one of our, they're going to be drive-in doors in the back. Um, you're, you're talking about delivery for the, the retail? Yes, shops deliveries for the right. retail. Yeah. There won't be a four-foot dock door or anything like that, so it'll have to be offloaded from a, a truck with a lift gate or something like that. One of our comments was to show us a, a truck turning template to see a truck get in here, turn around, and come back out. So, and that'll be one thing that we'll need to see. They are adding a pretty good sizable area in the back, so a vehicle should be able to turn around and come back out. A fire truck, delivery truck, anything like that. This, this was the first iteration. It's kind of hard to, 
tell you what how it's changed, evolved in the in the review process, but. Other questions? Thank you, Mike. We have a motion second. and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve site plan approval for item 17-3041, James Davis property, please say aye. aye. Is there any opposition? That motion to approve carries, thank you. Item 6C, rezoning request that are scheduled for public hearing. Item 6C1, 17-A031, Matthew Bratton. The location is 1619 Flat Rock Road. Commission district is 43, which I don't think could be right. It's, uh, it should be four, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Commission district four. Uh, county commissioner is Robert P. Jr. Size of the site is approximately seven acres. Tax map 90. Existing zoning is RM, residential medium density, and the proposed zoning is for commercial services. Proposed um, zoning, once again, is for commercial services. Uh, Doug? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I will say, in my defense, I did get it right in the staff report that it's actually <laughs> Commission District 4, not 43, so sorry about that. Uh, this property should look familiar to the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, you'll recall that uh, back in August, well, I guess that was uh, earlier than that even, uh, it would have been in July that the Planning Commission looked at it. It was in August that the Board of Commissioners looked at it. Uh, this There was an application to approve about a half acre or so property uh, adjacent to the, yeah, Mike's gonna zoom in on it there. Uh, that little, yeah, right there, that little uh, CS portion right there was zoned uh, to that about, uh, again, back in uh, August of uh, this year. The Planning Commission also approved a site plan for the uh, AJ's Tree Service at the uh, Planning Commission meeting for uh, October 23rd uh, of this year. Uh, since that time, the applicant has indicated to staff a desire to either sell the remainder of the larger property or to possibly expand the business uh, further. Uh, he's requesting that the remainder of the property be zoned commercial services uh, from its current residential zoning. As such, since it's just more of a speculative thing at this point, there's no concept plan that was submitted with the request. Uh, as you can see, there is an existing single family structure on the property. Uh, zoning this property commercial services would render the single family use as non-conforming. As long as the use is not discontinued for longer than 30 months, it can continue based on our non-conforming regulations in the zoning ordinance, which you can find in chapter 13. If the use is discontinued for longer than 30 months, even if the property sells, uh, or if the property is redeveloped and the use is removed, then that non-conforming status would be lost. But if the use continues, they can sell it, they can lease it, they can do whatever as long as the use of that continues. Uh, access to the property would still be from Flat Rock Road, landscaping performance standards, all of that would have to meet our zoning ordinance requirements. At this time, it's just difficult to say uh, what the access and everything will look like just because uh, at this point, we just, we simply don't know. Uh, generally speaking, uh, staff is supportive of the request. Uh, you see a lot of the zoning on Flat Rock in this area is residential um, uh, uh, medium density, but you can see on the map uh, that Mike is looking at right there, he's got the city of Murfreesboro zoning map on as well. You can see some multifamily zoning right along Flat Rock Road, some commercial local zoning. There's also a copy of that zoning map in your agenda into packets as well. Uh, a little further to the south, uh, there's also some industrial zoning uh, in this area that you can that you can see. There's some uh, auto dismantlers uh, and, and such a little further down Flat Rock Road. Uh, with that, uh, the applicant is present and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions at this time? Uh, 
a, a various amount of, of retail type uses. Construction sales and service uh, is one of the things also. Of course, if he were to expand his business onto this property, construction sales and services are allowed in this zone. Uh, it wouldn't be allowed in, say, the commercial neighborhood zone, but is allowed in this one. Um, you don't see really any of the heavier commercial, you don't see auto dealerships or anything like that in this zone, nor would you see any kind of industrial type warehouses or anything like that in this zone either. Out of the three commercial classifications we have, this is the middle of the road classification. So the city zone RM? RM 16, that's residential multifamily, and it's got a maximum density of 16 units per acre. Are there any other I'm not aware of any right now. I think that's been zoned that way for quite some time. I think I worked on the annexation request, and I worked at the city, as a matter of fact, for that one. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Ready for our public hearing. This time I'll declare the public hearing open for item 17-A031. Matthew Bratton is the applicant present. Would you please please come forward? Name and address for the record, please. My name is Matthew Bratton. I live at the property in question, 1619 Flat Rock. So, any questions? A very brief description of uh, what you're doing. Wanting uh, to do. it, it's to be determined, to be honest. It, uh, with some of the requirements needed next door at the other one, I'm gonna need some funds. So I've got some, some other places for sale, and if they sell, I won't need to sell this, and I'll just, It'll, it'll probably stay the rental house that it is now, and if something doesn't sell soon enough, I'll need to sell this to be able to fund the improvements next door. Questions for Mr. Bratton? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against this rezoning request? Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. <coughs> Commissioners? Any calls or have you heard from uh, Commissioner P? I have not heard from Commissioner P about this, but at the same time I hadn't received any phone calls about it one way or the other either. Mr. Chairman, the fact that he is, I guess the AJ's tree service in the title led me to believe that he may be opening or expanding his tree service business there, which made me think he might be taking big logs and using a chainsaw all day long to cut those into small logs, which gave me some angst about the residential neighborhoods in proximity. but. That does not sound like it's the intent or the case here. So um, I would make a motion to approve the request, zoning request, based on staff's comments. Mike. A motion to approve. And a second. Thank you, Craig. Any other discussion? I have a question. Doug, is it a tree service or a plumbing service? I thought I read in the report. It was originally a plumbing service, but uh, that plumbing service is no longer there, and it's now the AJ's tree service. So at the plumbing service left the, the prop. They sold it to the, um, to the applicant, the, existing, the, uh, the property where the business was. That's now, that's now AJ's tree service. The plumbing business was uh, combined with another firm in town. personal comment than anything else. I'm just, I'm never comfortable, generally speaking, with speculative rezoning, um, and especially to go from an REM to a CS, which is very generous in its uses <clears throat> on this scale without having a more specific plan, I'm, I'm not comfortable with.
Other questions? Ready to vote. We have a rezoning request, uh, item 17-A031 for Matthew Bratton from RM to CS. All those in favor of that motion to approve the request, please say aye. Opposition. No. Call the roll, please, Gail. Jim Averwater. Yes. Mike Cush. Yes. Craig Lynch. Yes. Chip Pinion. Yes. Charlotte P. Yes. Pettis Reed. Yes. Mike Watt. Yes. Jeff Phillips. Aye. It's in two no's. Motion carries 7 2. Under uh, uh, other business, um, I think Doug has a, an announcement to make. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just a couple of things. Uh, we need to, consistent, to be consistent with our bylaws, appoint a nominating committee for chair and vice chair for the 2018 calendar year. Uh, after discussing uh, this with uh, Mr. Phillips, uh, we have asked uh, Chip Pinion, Jim Averwater, and Charlotte P. to be involved in this committee. They have all uh, graciously agreed to do that. Uh, they will make their report next month. So uh, if we could just have a, a motion to that effect, then that would be great. We have a motion and, and a second uh, to, oppo uh, to approve uh, Chip, Jim, and Charlotte on our nominating committee. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. Is there any opposition? The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, the 8th of January. It will also be a 6 p.m. meeting here at the courthouse. Uh, and I think uh, Mike Cush has a, an announcement to make. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have been contacted, Doug and I have been contacted by uh, some folks at Leadership Rutherford, and on January 3rd, it is uh, local government day for Leadership Rutherford, and at 10.30 a.m. at the CUD, Consolidated Utility District Headquarters, they would like us to perform a mock planning commission for about an hour that would include some q a so that being said um, uh, doug is going to ask for some volunteers to attend a mock planning commission to educate leadership rutherford on what the planning commission does how people how and why people come to us and the steps that they take to go through and how we reach our decisions as planning commissioners. So uh, I will be the first to volunteer, Doug, but uh, hopefully our chairman and others would uh, be happy to give an hour of their time on January 3rd. What time? Uh, it starts at 1030 in the morning uh, at CUD's conference room, and I think Doug has an address maybe is off the top of my head. We'll is get it, it to you. 709, Alan, 709 uh, New Salem Highway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think all 11 of you have to be there, but, you know, five, seven, something like that would probably be, would be good. We don't want to be accused of having a meeting that's not a meeting, <laughs> so since so it's just a mock thing. But, uh, yeah, five or seven I think would be good. See, see Doug after the meeting if you can attend or if you need time to think about it, call him uh, as soon as you can. Yeah, we'll send an email reminder out about this as well. If I could have the floor for a couple more things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just um, part of our responsibility as staff is to make sure that you have the required four hours of training that uh, public chapter 862 requires uh, most of you in here have gotten some of the hours in some of you've gotten all of them uh, there is uh, a requirement for regional planning commissions that we do have to have an hour specifically on private property right training 
to kind of kill two birds with one stone, uh, we're going to have a training in our office building in the mezzanine uh, next Tuesday, which would be the 19th. Uh, I've asked Josh to uh, make a uh, presentation uh, regarding private property rights. Uh, we're going to have uh, someone from our engineering department, Ms. Katie P. She's going to be doing some, uh, uh, presenting some information on the uh, stormwater program and the things that we look at. And I'm trying to think of a third thing. I'd like to make it somewhere between 9 and 12, probably about three hours. So if there's some of you here that still need some hours, you can kind of, again, kill two birds with one stone. So we'll send a, an email out about that. Uh, I've also talked with uh, our Cable 19 folks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and record it. It's not going to be for... Um, we're not going to televise it, but we will record it in case one of you or some of you can't make it. Uh, we'll be able to get you the, a copy of the DVD so that you can watch it and then just let us know and we'll make sure that you get checked down for your uh, training requirements. So I uh, just want to let you know about that. Any questions on that? Tuesday. Next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but next Tuesday, the 19th. Right. Uh, we'll start at 9 o'clock in the mezzanine. Uh, one last thing that I wanted just to chat with you about, and this is really just more for your information than anything. Uh, I placed a memorandum on your tables uh, prior to the meeting today. You'll see it's from Mike and myself. It's to the different engineering and surveying companies. Uh, we sent this out to a, a variety of companies uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, you'll notice that uh, some of the issues that we've been having on plats and site plans about sometimes them not being quite ready to be at the planning commission level you'll see our current deadline date and meeting date on the front page there right now our review cycle is 17 days essentially so it's 17 days prior to the daytime planning commission meeting so that gives us 17 days from submittal to do our review to get the comments out get the agenda going and, and all that then get the revisions back make sure they're in decent order and then bringing them to you at the planning commission after discussing it with uh, with Mike and, and staff we feel it'd be desirable for both ourselves staff and also the design firms to have some additional time to review and revise the submitted projects uh, what I'd recommend you do is look on the back of that memo Memo that I gave you. Uh, the front is uh, it's a little bit different because of the holiday so uh, a more representative example would be the table that you see on the back. Uh, our submittal that we're essentially extending it by about a, a couple weeks really. Uh, rather than just have the, the one submittal, the one review and then comments are, are sent to the uh, surveyor engineer and then revisions are sent back. You can see what we're doing is we're having the submittal deadline then we're going to have initial review comments sent a week after that. Their initial resubmittal will be sent digital only to us a week after that on the 13th in February if we're using that cycle. The second review comments, if any, since there shouldn't be as much to look at because most of our comments hopefully should be addressed, our second review comments would be sent three days after that. And then that final resubmittal would be submitted to us really the normal time that it is right now, prior uh, five days prior to the meeting. And then that planning commission meeting, you can see, would be February the 26th. We're hoping that this uh, extra cycle kind of uh, improves the quality of the plans, both for staff's standpoint and also for the, uh, the design engineer. It gives them a little more time to uh, address some of the comments that may be a little more uh, complex in nature. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to you all's attention. It's something that we're instituting with this next uh, uh, submittal deadline. Uh, this is really just for plats and plans. As far as those that come to the Planning Commission, we'll still handle administrative plats the same way we do now or site plans the same way we do now. Uh, and rezonings uh, aren't applying to this uh, or uh, do not apply. This won't apply to rezoning or BZA applications. So again, just uh, just something for your information. If, uh, we've gotten pretty good feedback. They've had some, some of the engineering firms have had some questions about it, just really more procedural type things. Uh, but everybody seems, uh, seems comfortable with it so far. I hadn't received any, any real negative comments about it. So I just wanted to pass that along for your information. Once again, how did you establish the January 30th date? How will that date be every month? Well, we have a... Last uh, days of the month or... or we, we essentially added about a week and a half 
to each deadline cycle is what we ended up doing. Uh, I mean, we did, there was no magic formula to come up with that. We were just trying to make sure, as you can see, everything's pretty much, almost everything's about a week apart is kind of what we're looking at. You know, from initial submittal to initial comments to initial resubmittal, there's a little bit of a, a shorter turnaround for the second review cycle, but uh, we're just trying to keep things moving forward at the same time as we're trying to give them a little more time to get the comments done. And quite frankly, as we go through this and if we think it needs to be tweaked, we'll tweak it. So, uh, but we think this is gonna be pretty workable at this point. Doug, do you publish this schedule for the entire year and give it to the firm so that they know that way you've allowed for weekends, holidays, that sort of thing? Right, and actually when I sent this memo out, uh, it was supposed to, we also did a, um, we redid the application form that goes along with it, kind of simplified it and kind of combined it. So plats and plans all use the same form now, which they didn't before. And uh, a calendar went out with that as well. So they, they have the calendar and they have the memo along with the revised form. The revised form has also been made a fillable PDF. It's on our website and I believe we uploaded the calendar as well. So it's, it's all out there for, for them to see. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, rezonings again. Rezonings don't change any. They're, those those deadlines are the same. Thank you, Doug. Anything else? Once again, uh, have a merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with each and every one of you guys this year. Thank you for your participation, uh, your commitment to the county. Uh, and once again, happy holidays. We're adjourned.